This is the velocity and change problem. It's uh, from our section on momentum. And what we've got going on is there's a particle uh, moving along in a single direction, let's say in the x direction, and there's a force acting in the x direction given as a function of time, starting from zero, increasing linearly, coming into full contact, imagine, applying this maximum force, and after a finite amount of time, it decreases to nothing and the force is no longer in contact with the object. So we're told that the object has an initial velocity. We're asked to find the velocity of the object after time t3, after the force is no longer acting on the object. Now this is a classic impulse momentum problem. We know that momentum is mass times velocity. Now we're going to assume the mass doesn't change in this for most problems that we do, uh, so that the change in momentum will simply uh, give rise to a change in velocity. Now it's not speed, it's velocity because, uh, you know, directional dependence, very uh, important. Now in this problem, uh, if we wanted to find, uh, you know, we call this the impulse. This is the impulse. We give something an impulse and we change its speed. Now, you notice this is almost like MA. In other words, look, if I take the change in momentum with time, I will get uh, M change in velocity with time. And that's just acceleration, and so that's just force. In other words, looking at these two ends here, Impulse, which is change in momentum, is simply force times change in time. Force times change in time will give me impulse? Why, yes it will. Just like, uh, you know, if we find the area under this whole curve, the force versus time curve, we can calculate the impulse. Just like, here's what I was going to say, just like if we had a force, um, distance curve uh, and the force vary, varies as you're moving an object a certain distance, the area under that curve, as you may recall, would give us the work, in this case, um, in joules. And uh, likewise, way back, if long ago, if we had the um, velocity of an object as a function of its time, then if that velocity changed, you know, you could think of it as speeding up, going to constant rate, slowing down, coming to rest. How far did we go? Well, our displacement would be the area under the velocity time curve. Why? Because displacement speed times time. If you're not accelerating, okay, even if you are, you're going at a constant rate in these intervals so we can find out how far we've gone. All right, so how do we find the area under the curve? A lot of you have calculus, or maybe you've heard your friends talking about it, and you're like, area under the curve. I need to do the integral. What's the function? Blah, blah, blah. Well, you know, you can make that uh, much work out of this problem. You could break this up into three integrals with these limits and come up with functional forms for each of these linear segments. But that's too much like work. You can do it. You might even want to practice doing it to make sure you really know your calculus. But my recommendation is we have three very simple um, geometric shapes. We have a couple of triangles and we have a rectangle. And I know how to find the area of those objects. I did that when I took geometry. So basically, your impulse it's going to be the area of this triangle plus this rectangle plus this tr other triangle. I know that the area of the triangle is one half base times height. In the case of this first triangle, my base is the difference between T1 and 0. I know that. And the height of this, well, it goes from 0 to F max. By the way, these times and this F max and the initial velocity of the object are all givens in your problem. You 
are asked to simply find V2. All right. Um, additionally, you have this uh, rectangle whose base is T2 minus T1, whose height is F max. And you have the last triangle, base of T3 minus T2. Again, the height is still F max. Life isn't always as easy as, as this, so let's appreciate it. Now, this is going to be a number, the units of which are newtons times seconds. What's a newton times a second? Well, it's just a change in momentum. If you want to make sure, look, momentum's mass times velocity, kilograms meter per second. Well, as I recall, a newton is a unit of force. And uh, that's a newton. Uh, what's a newton? Ma. F equals ma. I can always remind myself that one newton is one mass unit kilogram times an acceleration, which is, of course, a meter per second squared. Now, we're um, dealing with newtons times second. So one of those seconds will therefore cancel out. A force times a time unit, a newton times a second will leave me with kilogram meters per second. Oh, I love it when dimensional analysis works for me. The point is, all of this will be some number of kilogram meters per second. In other words, a mass times a velocity unit. And it will amount to the mass, which I believe is given, yes it is, times a change in velocity. In other words, some number that you calculated, in other words, the area under this curve, the impulse, equals the mass times the change in velocity. The mass is given. This is what you're looking for, V2. Initial velocity is given. So you had a number up here equal to a number uh, times the difference of an unknown and a number, and I do believe you can handle the algebra from there. You're working in SI units, the speed you get better be in meters per second. And if you do things right, it should work for you. Have a very nice day.